Now, Sinn Féin made history recently uh, when taking um, the most votes and the most seats in Northern Ireland's uh, elections. But the Assembly is still deadlocked as the DUP demands changes to the protocol and the UK government rows with the European Union. But the non-sectarian Alliance Party was one of the biggest winners too. They more than doubled their seats with a big jump in votes, especially among young people, possibly pointing to a different future for Northern Irish politics. Well, the party says the Assembly must restart and they want to overhaul the entire power-sharing system. So let's speak now to the Alliance leader, Naomi Long, who is live in Belfast for us this morning. Thank you very much for being with us. Um, you did very well uh, in the recent Assembly elections. Um, I just want to start by talking a little bit about what the Alliance Party stands for. Uh, uh, what is it that you're about and what in particular is your stance on the Good Friday Agreement? Well, thank you, Sophie, and we have been fervent supporters of the Good Friday Agreement because from our inception 51 years ago, we were committed to power sharing and devolution locally as the best way to provide a stable future for the people of Northern Ireland, to allow people to self-govern um, and to create a society which was egalitarian and fair because that was not the case prior to that point and unfortunately it's still not the case now. Alliance would describe itself um, as a liberal and progressive party, but also we are a pragmatic party and very keen um, to be able to continue to work to deliver improvements for people's lives, which is why the Assembly is so important. At the same time, you want to see non-sectarian <laughs> power sharing, which feels like it could be quite ambitious. Do you think it is really achievable? Well, I think the alternative is the stop-go assembly that we have seen over the last five years, where for the majority of the time we haven't had functioning devolution. I don't believe that's sustainable. People in Northern Ireland are facing a cost of living crisis. They are concerned about the state of our health service, which is some of the longest waiting lists in the UK. And what they want is government to deliver change and to try to assist them with those issues. And instead, what they get is government, which is held to ransom, sometimes by Sinn Féin, sometimes by the DUP, and a cycle of crisis and collapse. And the only way we can stop that happening is to remove the vetoes that those parties currently are able to exercise over the institutions and allow all votes in the Assembly to count for the same amount, because currently my vote doesn't count for the same amount as other colleagues, because I won't designate as unionist or nationalist. And so we need to deal with this fundamental issue. The Good Friday Agreement provided us with a means of managing division in Northern Ireland. But society has changed as the Good Friday Agreement intended it would in the last 24 years. And so we now need to be open to changing the mechanisms and structures, not the principles of power sharing, not the idea that we have to share this place together and work together in order to deliver, but actually the mechanisms that are there, which currently are making the institutions more unstable. And that's what we would like to see happen in order that when we come to these difficult issues, whether it's the protocol or, or whether it's something else, because there is always something else, that we're able to work through that rather than stop government until it's resolved. You're talking about the sort of stop-start nature of government and Sinn Féin and the DUP being able to hold Northern Ireland to ransom. Do you think that is what the DUP is currently doing then, holding Northern Ireland to ransom by refusing to enter power sharing because of their concerns over the protocol? Or do you have a bit more sympathy with their position? Well, I understand their position. I understand their lack of trust in the UK government because I think at times the UK government have used Northern Ireland as a bit of a plaything when it comes to maintaining a grievance with Europe. They believe that for them electorally, for the Conservatives in England, this is a positive. And so they're willing to continue to have this constant grievance with the European Union and Northern Ireland is, I suppose, a useful lever for them. But it's very damaging for community relations and for good governance in Northern Ireland. And so I do understand why the DUP um, lack trust in promises made by the UK government. But undoubtedly, they're holding the people of Northern Ireland to ransom. I mean, Geoffrey Donaldson himself has said that he is using the position of being able to prevent government as leverage over the UK government. So, I mean, there's no question about that, and they've been openly admitting it. My problem is that it also holds the rest of us to ransom who want to get back to work, who want to start delivering for the people who elected us only two weeks ago, and who believe that there are powers that we have within the Assembly that can address the very immediate problems of fuel costs, of the cost of, of food um, and uh, the cost um, of living um, in Northern Ireland. 
um, can start to deal with reform of our health service, which is urgent, particularly post-pandemic. And yet at the same time, we can negotiate around how the protocol could be improved, because I think all parties agree um, that certain changes would be beneficial to Northern Ireland businesses. So what do you think needs to change about the protocol then? Well, from our perspective, we are pragmatic about the protocol. It is Brexit that has ultimately caused the instability in Northern Ireland as we knew it would. The whole purpose of the Good Friday Agreement was to diminish the importance of border, border issues um, and to make Northern Ireland function in a fairer way. And unfortunately, Brexit put borders and border friction uh, back on the agenda. And that is very difficult for the very delicate ecology of Northern Ireland um, to deal with. The protocol was an attempt, albeit I would say a rather, um, a rather heavy handed attempt to deal with those border frictions and to ensure that there was still free flow across the border um, on the island of Ireland and no hard border established. But it did in the end lead to a, an additional level of friction in the Irish Sea. And I understand that for unionists, um, that is a very difficult situation, albeit for us, it was an inevitability and a consequence of Brexit. What we need to do now is build trust with the European Union. We're asking them essentially um, to devolve the protection of the single market to, to the UK, to allow us to have a green channel for goods coming from GB to Northern Ireland that won't go any further. But for them to do that, they need to trust the UK government will do what it says it's going to do. And of course, the history of the protocol is that they haven't done that. They've taken unilateral action um, and they've failed to keep the agreement that they negotiated and signed. So we were very clear when we met with the Prime Minister earlier this week that what we now need is for a negotiation between the UK and the EU to be taken seriously by the UK government, for them to live up to the deals that they make. Um, and to work to build trust rather than take unilateral action, which will undermine that, because in doing so, we can minimise the impact of the protocol on businesses, both in GB and in Northern Ireland, but still allow Northern Ireland to have the advantage that it has, which is free and unfettered access both into the EU single market for goods and into the UK single market for goods. And we need to exploit that in order to grow our economy in Northern Ireland. I guess what the UK government would argue uh, is that, yes, uh, they signed up to the protocol, but they didn't envisage a situation where the EU would, in their view, uh, implement it in a heavy handed way. So effectively assuming that goods are going to be going on to the EU rather than staying in Northern Ireland. Do, do you have any sympathy with that position from uh, the UK government? None whatsoever, because before they signed the protocol, there is evidence that was presented to both the Prime Minister um, and indeed to Lord Frost, which set out very clearly what the implications of the protocol would be. Um, you cannot negotiate a deal, see what that deal is going to do, sign up to that deal, sell it as a good deal, which is how the Prime Minister fought the elections, let's remember, um, and then say that you didn't fully understand what you'd signed up to. I mean, that is just an admission of failure on behalf of the government. I think the presumption has always been that the UK will behave in an exceptional manner and will be allowed to do so. And unfortunately, when we were part of the European Union, we set the rules for third countries and now we are a third country. We need to learn to live by those rules. And it seems to be something that the government struggles with. I think most people will understand this is a very simple thing. When you make an agreement and when you give your word to do something, you ought to be at least prepared to do that thing before you do so. And I think when you don't, people will then trust you less and less on every subsequent occasion when you're asked to give your word on something. What we now need is to break that cycle. Um, and actually get the UK government to deal with the EU, who are still, despite everything, willing to have these discussions and willing to try to accommodate what is in the best interests of Northern Ireland. And I think if we can get to a point where the UK government and the EU can set aside whatever issues they have, build that trust and get a, a, a set of um, protocols in place that will allow good governance. Because remember, we need for business' sake, political stability... Okay but also Thank stability you. in terms of the arrangements going forward. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Naomi Long there of the Alliance Party. Thank you for being on the programme today.